This is the Loaded Radio Podcast. Hey, it's Scott Penfold, and this is another edition of the Loaded Radio Podcast. And this week, I'm going to be talking to the pretty reckless front woman, Taylor Momsen. Now, they released the new album, Death by Rock and Roll, last year in 2021. And they're currently on the road with Greta Van Fleet for a North American run of dates. But uh, Taylor can take some time to join us here on the Loader Radio podcast and just talk about what's going on with The Pretty Reckless, what's going on with her, what's going on with Taylor Momsen, and of course, the current tour that she's on with Greta Van Fleet. Also, in the second portion of the podcast, I'm going to be joined by Loaded Radio's Johnny Rude, who's going to be joining us live from Las Vegas, Nevada, where we will discuss the week that was in hard rock and heavy metal so if it's happening in hard rock and metal we'll discuss it let you know keep you up to date on everything that's going on okay so by all means you can stick around for that after we speak with this woman here she is the front woman for the band the pretty reckless the new album death by rock and roll dropping in 2021 she's currently out there supporting the hell out of this album with the band and right now out on the road there with Greta Van Fleet joining us from the road the one and only Taylor Momsen from the pretty reckless Taylor how are you Hey, Scott, how are you? Good, how are things? I'm doing well. Before we get into anything, I really wanted to ask you, of course, about the pandemic. I know that there was some music released, like uh, the song you did with Lizzie and with Maria and stuff, and of course, with uh, Death by Rock and Roll. Uh, but what did you really spend a lot of time uh, doing during the pandemic? During the pandemic, it was, I mean, obviously a very strange time for everyone in the world. Um, it was, you know, we had just finished our album right before the pandemic hit. We were actually shooting the album cover. Okay. Um, right when lockdown started. So we were all gearing up and ready to go on tour and put out, you know, a record and, and all of that. And so it just kind of really shut everything down. So it was a very unique experience because basically I had to promote an album from home. So right. it was very weird. We put out singles, you know, all did very well, multiple number ones and videos, all those things. And just, I never left my house. I did it all from Zoom and, you know, it was a, it was just very strange, which yeah, does, sure. you know, like <laughs> not being able to play new music live and get that kind of, you know, that, that catharsis and that release of a new album. It just kind of made it feel very unreal. The sure. release of Death by Rock and Roll. Um, but in one way, it's now made tour even more fun and extra exciting just because the, the music has been, you know, out there for a year now. So it's, it, we're playing new material, but the fans all know it. So it's this very kind of, we're not introducing them to the new songs. We're just introducing them to the live experience of them. And it's, it's great. It's been absolutely awesome. Oh, and, and that's awesome too. And you know what? It's a great album, man. It's so killer, dude. Like it really is. And uh, I want to ask you about a couple of the songs off. And of course, I do want to ask you about the song only love can save me now. Uh, what can you tell me about that one? That's a very important song to me. Um, it's a song that I wrote a very dark period in my life. Um, I was, I was very desperate for something. And, uh, and that song came about and, it's you know it obviously it features matt cameron and kim sale which is yeah. it just absolutely amazing um you know great friends of mine huge idols of mine and so when i i finished writing the song i called them up and i just couldn't hear it played without them so like it, uh, just, yeah. it, it, it was begging for their voices and so i sent them a demo asked if they'd want to be on it and uh and they thankfully said yes. I mean, it was an awesome experience recording it. We flew to Seattle. We recorded it at London Bridge Studios, which is where, you know, Soundgarden made Louder Than Love and Pearl yeah. Jam made 10 and Alice in Chains made Dirt. So legendary, the yeah. studi legendary. The <laughs> studio was so much history and, and getting to, to work there and not only work there, but then to be there with Matt and Kim was just kind of kind of surreal and, and mind blowing and just one of the greatest experiences of my life. But now, did, did the thought cross your mind of possibly having Ben Shepard involved, too? Um, of course, but you know, everyone was, that was a very tumultuous time for everyone. We, you know, we had all gone through a lot of loss and, and sure. trauma separately and together and, and all of that. So everyone was kind of in their own world. So it was, it was great that we got, you know, the, the three of us together, at least <laughs> love Ben though. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool that you kind of stepped into those shoes of, you know, Chris's shoes for almost kind of a second there. I mean, and it really comes off so well, man. It's just so well done. Oh, thank you. I mean, I don't ever want to say I'm stepping in Chris's shoes. Like I never would want to say that, <laughs> but because uh, that was not my place to say that at all. But uh, getting to, to collaborate with with Matt and Kim was just absolutely uh, it's just the coolest thing in the world. And I'm so proud with how that that turned out. And then making the video was a whole other experience because that was during the pandemic. So it was uh, like we they shot their part in Seattle. I shot my part in New York and I was directing via FaceTime. Like it was, oh, it was really? chaos. But uh, yeah, but it, it, to somehow make it all look symbiotic, like we were in the same place. It was a, a bit of a challenge, but I think it turned out pretty great. 
another great track uh, and so it went with tom morello on that one of course tell me about that track kind of a similar situation in the sense that uh i've known tom for years um but not very well just kind of in passing and we really kind of connected at the at the chris cornell i'm the highway tribute back yeah. in 2019 because we were both playing with soundgarden on the song loud love yeah. and so that we really kind of struck up a friendship there and uh and kind of a similar situation where when I wrote and so it went, you know, I write all the songs first. I never, I, I don't write songs with people in mind. It's the song comes. And then if there's someone outside of our, you know, core unit that I really think could, you know, take the song to its full potential, then I reach out. And, and when, and so it went came around just due to the lyrical content and the overall kind of energy of the song, it just, it made a lot of sense to me. I was like, well, you know, Tom's got to come whale a solo on this. So I yeah. sent it to him and, <laughs> He said, absolutely. And then when we got his tracks back, he sent them to us and it was just, it did exactly what I thought it was going to do. It just exploded into Tom Morello awesomeness. You know, I know of course, a lot of people really hyped and excited to be seeing you out there on the road there with Greta Van Fleet. Uh, are you a fan of those guys? I mean, I've never met them. I hear they're amazing uh, people. I hear they're the greatest dudes. So I'm very excited. I'm very looking forward to it. Um, I'm not super familiar with their music, if I'm being honest, but uh, I've also been living in a bubble for the past five years. So I'm going okay, to just, just think just, just think Zeppelin one and you're good. <laughs> All right. Well, I love Led Zeppelin. So right on. <laughs> there we go. Now, are you currently working on any new material right now? I know, of course, artists are always working on new stuff. Are you currently like, you know, putting pen to paper or, you know, picking up a guitar, sitting at the end of your bed, doing anything new? I am literally sitting on the end of my bed on the bus right now with a guitar in hand. That's awesome. um, <laughs> so I, the answer is yes, always. Tour is a bit of a bubble because, uh, you know, you're so focused on the show. And I found that actually writing new music is challenging in the sense that then you have to get on stage and remember the old songs. And when you're in the process of working on something new, it can be a bit distracting sometimes. Sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, writing is something that I can never really shut off. So that's something I'm always working on, but generally the real like meat of a record, the real meat of the material comes when I'm off the road and I'm kind of just jotting down ideas and things as they come to me while I'm on tour. Uh, I did want to bring up the track Mother You Did with Lizzie and with Maria, which came out in 2020. A great song, man. How was that experience? It was great. It was, uh, you know, I did my part. I was actually working in the studio in Maine. So I recorded there yeah. um, and sent it off to them and, and they put it all together. And it, I think it turned out really cool. And, you know, Queen, I'm a huge fan. So how can you go wrong if we will rock you? There's been some fan interest in uh, possibly you and just Lizzie doing something. Do you think that's something you could do in the future? Oh, I, first of all, we just finished a tour with Hailstorm. We played our last show with them of this run last night. And yeah. I love I love her so much. I love them so much. They're, they're such good friends of mine. So I would definitely never say never on that. But, you know, it has to be the right song, the right moment. You know, everything, all the pieces would have to fall into place. But, but absolutely, I, I love her to death. Now, you personally, Taylor, what are three albums that inspires you to pursue your career in music? Like, what are three albums that changed your life personally for you? Ah, uh, well, every Beatles record, I can't pick just one, so I'll okay. count that as one, uh, <laughs> one record. Um, right. The Beatles and kind of the same thing, every, every Soundgarden record. I'll go with, uh, I kind of heard them all at the same time I, when, I found, when I fell into Soundgarden and I fell in love with that because, uh, you know, I was a little older and so they were already out. Yeah. Uh, so I was super unknown, Bad Motor for Your Live in Love. And then obviously when King Animal came out uh, and that was brand new music and I was so happy <laughs> i've never yeah, been yeah. so happy to have a new soundgarden album um so it's, it's it's more bands than just specific records the beatles soundgarden and third band i'll go pink floyd pink floyd nice. is, wow okay yeah pink floyd has uh, definitely impacted my life and is currently just all i've been listening to on tour have you had the chance to see roger waters live I haven't, and I'm dying to see that show. Oh, I've, watched, I've watched all the YouTubes and stuff, and it just looks absolutely like you look at that and you just go, Well, that's a show. What are we all <laughs> <Yeah>. doing? <laughs> what are we all doing? Yeah, with it's, our it's lives? epic. It's an experience. I, I would die to see that. Um, but I mean, just looking at you, though, and some of the live shows you've done, and some of the artists you've toured with, I mean, Guns and Roses, but the first time I actually I saw you live was the last date on the tour you did with Guns and Roses. Um, and uh, you did a killer experience. I mean, you really did affect, I think, not just me, but a lot of the people there that night, because I mean, just the, like I said before, the presence you put out there was just fantastic. And, and the music, of course, the tracks were just awesome. That was, a, 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 I guess, a, uh, a certain type of Guns N' Roses, not the current incarnation that we know, but how was being on tour with Axel and that, that makeup of the band? 
it was awesome, honestly. Um, you know, you hear all these horror stories about bands and, and you know, rock stars like Axel and stuff. And he was great. It was super fun. It was, it was awesome. It was interesting. It was the one and only tour where, because that was our first album. We, we were touring Light Me Up. And so we only had one record. And that yeah. was the first and only tour where we were asked to play longer than we were able to no, <laughs> we really? only had one album we were already playing a couple covers and after like the first show Axel was like yeah play long we should play longer he play longer because you know he likes to go on late sure. and by the time <laughs> we had like three by the end of the tour we had like three covers we're playing everything on the album and i was like okay we can't play any longer because if we play any more covers we're just a cover band and uh so we ended <laughs> up just we ended up just extending the guitar solos it's like ben take it away oh, yeah. um <laughs> but it was it was great it was a super fun experience and i would love to do it again he, he was awesome well, of course. Uh, I mean, we did talk about Matt and Kim, but I mean, being on the road with Soundgarden, what, what was that experience like? I mean, did you get close with the guys then? Is that when you really sort of developed that friendship? Yeah, I did. I got very close with them. And it it was, honestly, I can't, it's still surreal to me. The whole thing is it's such a, a whirlwind and a roller coaster of emotions to even think about it. But um, it was when I got the phone call that we were going to be opening for Soundgarden, it was just the highest of highs i could ever imagine like I, it, it didn't feel real it was it, it was crazy and um and as you know a dream a dream tour of mine like uh, the my pinnacle bands were the beatles and soundgarden so i just could not wrap my mind around it and then to to get to meet them all and to to get to know them as, as people like that was i think one of the coolest things is that they were so awesome they're so awesome as, as guys as, as men um you know and you know you always hear horror stories like don't meet your idols and it can go really bad and they're not what you think and then it taints the idea they were everything i thought and more and still are and and getting to watch them every night was just a an honor and a pleasure and and sharing a stage with them was just uh the, the, one of the highlights of my life do you, do you remember the last time you spoke to or saw chris i do um but that's a that's a long heavy story that i don't want to get into right now but um but of yes course. i do of course <laughs> I, I mean obviously we have got the tour right now going on with greta van fleet uh, a lot of people of course excited to see you guys out there again um but besides that what is coming up for the pretty reckless what's coming up with you like what are you what are you doing uh, lots of stuff. We have another single coming out very soon here um, for a song called Got So High, the video and all of that. Um, mm -hmm. There's also another, we have this, uh, I don't really know what I'm allowed to say. I'm not sure when this comes out, but there's a, <laughs> another collection of music that we've put together over the past year that i'm very proud of and very excited to share and that is is coming soon as well um so some new releases stay tuned for all of that and uh and then tour you know canada and which we're so excited to get back to canada it's been way too long uh, and then some more in the states and then we're heading over to europe in october and you know and then the, the road keeps rolling it keeps, it keeps going <laughs> you have piqued my interest with saying about the the new collection of songs obviously i mean uh, could be a new album, new EPs, or anything you can reveal about that at all. It's it's hard to explain. It's um it's it's not like a full new album of original material like that. But it's you know it's some covers, it's some alternative versions of songs. It's it's kind of a compilation album of things that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And uh, thank actually thankfully it's the pandemic had time to work on. And um, I'm just in this by the end of the pandemic i went oh, we, we made an album and i'm i'm very proud of this and and so i'm just excited to share it and it's it's kind of a different look inside the pretty reckless a different um, side of us that you might not have seen before very interesting man just really i wanted to ask you as well what is your favorite song to perform live oh man that's an impossible question i know it, it is that's why i'm it asking changes it. <laughs> every, it changes every single night it really does. I mean, obviously, the new material is, is we're having a blast with right now because it's it's new. Um, yeah, sure. But uh, but we've actually been opening our set with with a, a cover of Soundgarden's "Loud Love." Oh, that's and awesome. That has that's just been so much fun. Like when we do during the pandemic, you know, we hadn't been on the road for about five years, um, and so coming back out, we were like, "What do you know?" what do we do? Where are we? And in rehearsals, we rehearsed for like six months. We always started the rehearsals with playing loud love for fun because it's, it's awesome. Yeah, and sure. I, I, by the end of rehearsals, we went, you know, screw it. Let's, let's play like us. Like, like let's do, let's go out there. We've had a lot of bad years. Everyone's had a lot of bad years. We just want to have a good time all the time. Let's go out. It's about 
us on stage, you know, connecting and playing and let's start with our warm up song, which is loud love and then go into everything else. And it's, it's been really awesome. It's been really fun. <laughs> That's cool. That, it's such a great song. And, and just, uh, it's, it's really great. And it's also kind of bookends. It, it, it makes sense in the, in the era of death by rock and roll. Cause that was, you know, one of the songs I, I performed with Soundgarden at the tribute show. Yeah. It was actually the first thing we recorded, um, when I was learning to learn, loud love to play that show we recorded it uh at the studio and it was the first thing we recorded without our producer Cato. it was so it's, it's kind of this full circle bookend moment to the the album and the cycle so it actually makes a lot of sense to us to start this up that way awesome taylor thanks so much for the time man you, you you've been awesome to talk to and uh, very cool for me as well so thank you oh awesome well thank you so much scott you asked wonderful questions and uh are you coming to a show i'm gonna be okay. there buddy fucking sweet i will see you soon <laughs> okay man take care Awesome. Have a good one. You wish all the best. Bye. There she is. That's Taylor Momsen, front woman for The Pretty Reckless. And yeah, man, the new album, Death by Rock and Roll. Well, it's still new. It came out in 2021, but it's uh, a pandemic year though, right? Uh, still a great album though, nonetheless. And uh, yeah, catch her out there right now with Greta Van Fleet. Um, but my name is Scott Penfold, and we're now going to be joined by Loaded Radio's own Johnny Rude. He's joining us live from Las Vegas, Nevada. And we're going to talk about the week that was in hard rock and metal. Johnny, what's going on, man? How's your microphone? It's nice. Spraying, spanking, cleaning. And so yeah, man, it seems to be, it seems to be working. Okay. What are you up to? Um, <clears throat> well, oh, hold on. Wait a second. I meant to ask you, what do you think about Tommy Lee showing his junk to the world on his Instagram page? Hey, what do you think of that? Oh, wow, dude. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's just, it was, I guess it was, Hey, I'm back. You know, uh, my ribs yeah. have healed and here's my cock. <laughs> <laughs> you know on I, instagram I, again he he set the social media on fire he broke the so he you know he he broke it right he broke the internet as they say yeah uh, literally um, with his cock he broke the with, internet with his cock. he broke the internet with his <laughs> cock for a day um yeah it's funny i know his chick uh you know she was um a vine sensation when vine was very popular back uh maybe six seven years ago kind of the first oh, uh, Brittany Furland. Yeah. Yeah. She, <laughs> it was funny. Uh, she goes, Oh my God, I answered the door and I said, we never ordered a horse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Funny. But uh, <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. Um, but you know what, what can I say? It's Tommy Lee. It's uh, it's, you got to do something right. Like he's still relevant. You yeah. Know? I, I mean, he is 59 years old. I mean, the, yeah, the, you and, know, <laughs> yeah, the, the operative word 59 years yeah. old. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, hey, I mean, if he if he's uh, if I guess if he's still able to do that at 59, fuck good on. Fuck yeah. On. Here's the thing. I don't know if if you did you watch that Pam and Tommy? Uh, I did. I okay. finally got around to it. I, I enjoyed oh, yeah. it a lot. It's it's very good. I me too. I think I thought it was great. I, yeah. I like, you know, the history dynamic of it. There was stuff I didn't know, but you kind of relive that because we live through it or I live through it. Yeah. Um, but it's it's amazing. And and when you think of it, he never gave a shit about that video released to the public. He yeah. didn't care. He's a he's a rock star. He wants to show his cock. But poor, <laughs> poor Pam Anderson. That's yeah. That was the this whole thing. You've ruined my career. He, he he did not care. He was glad it was out there. You know. Yeah. I, I, I mean, all in all, I mean, he's done some assholeish things to some people. You know. Of course, absolutely. <laughs> That's just it. It's money, power, ego. That's yeah. what it comes down to. When you have all of that, it eschews how you you per portray things. And when you're up, you always got to come down. But uh, I mean, with with this Motley Crue stuff, I mean, back in the late 90s early 2000s no one knew who the fuck they were back then i mean i i know this uh, you know doing doing what i was doing motley crew guns and roses all, poison all this shit no one even knew man yeah. in the the mid 90s to the early 2000s i'd say around people forgot them yeah forgotten mm. twisted sister that music never got played but around 2010 11 12 it started coming back again and basically people who were of that the young age all of a sudden started owning and running companies and and you know putting tv commercials out there they started running the world so boom all of a sudden all that stuff you they grew up we grew up on becomes popular again yeah um but yeah uh motley crew tommy lee no one gave a shit about so now that they're back again that money power ego thing 
comes back in. It, being humble is one thing. I, I really think this was a, a publicity stunt. I do too. Obviously. You know, yep. I haven't played a full show. I'm back. Here's what I'm going to do. And, uh, you know, he's not shy about it, right? No, he's not. I mean, and it got the reaction I think he wanted. It was a yes. cry for attention. He got it. Um, and yeah. uh, you know, his wife played along with it. I think as well. Oh, of and, course uh, she did. Uh, they they uh, knew what they, they knew what was going to happen. He yeah. just didn't randomly do that strategically. Of yeah, put together. I'm going to do this, honey. You know, oh, go ahead. I mean, she's a social Maybe. media star, essentially. That, for Lane, exactly. Right? So, I mean, exactly. There you go. That's and the whole. She shit. wasn't surprised. My ass. She was surprised. Yeah. No. 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 And then he made a little sort of meme of of it, like it's uh. Uh, same picture, but all sort of doctored with different colored pictures, like a, uh, I don't know, uh, all sort of pixelated. It's the same picture of him sitting. Yeah, I saw that. Up. But you know, fuck it. It's, it's not like they need help selling tickets. I think all this tour is sold out. Yeah, uh, I, I think so. I mean, they're they're making a ton of bank on it on their reunion oh, tour. Yeah. Yeah, after, it's going to go on, dude. It's after gonna go signing on. a cessation of touring agreement, like what was it back in 2015? <laughs> it's now yeah. they're back. this is our last t- bullshit it's like that they, they rook they rook in to make more money just like kiss i mean come on yeah. kiss ain't going anywhere it's funny because gene simmons was recently saying that the tour is going to end sometime in 2023 he has no idea where he's right now he's like they originally planned for the kiss tour to end in new york and gene's like well it might it, we could keep going past that i mean gene i don't think wants the fucking tour to end dude no he did because again it's what happens once this ends it ends. No one's yeah. going to give a shit about Gene Simmons, right? I mean, yeah. it's over. It's it, it's that's what happens. You become that this guy. Oh yeah, that was Gene Simmons. Oh cool, but you you yourself, uh, not your self worth. What you're supposed to do has ended, and it's it's sad because that's what happens. Someone yeah, else. Yeah, well then that's what that's why there's all the reunion tours that. Of course. After that point, because then all of a sudden, well, you're the uh, center of attention again. Of and, course, and you're making good yeah. money. You're making bank. Yeah, and that's why they don't want it to end because once it's over, buddy, it's not like they're putting out a new record and going to start a new tour. You know, when they were twenty five years old, and that's what that's what you do. This has been the longest reunion uh, tour I think in history, starting back in what ninety seven. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> think about it. That's how long this has been going on. Um, right. So, but yeah, once it's over, it's over. You know, no one's going to give a shit. And uh, that's a tough pill to swallow for anybody because you've got your whole life. This is what makes you. This is what you are. You have no self-worth in a sense after it's like, it's over for me, man. I'm Yeah, just chill out, dude. You don't need money. You can relax now. But I think these guys don't know how to because they've been doing this for so long. This is what I do. I don't know how to do anything else. That's pretty much it. And 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 deep, they don't want to do anything else. Okay? No. But yeah, uh, that's the thing. I mean, if, if you break it big with one band in particular, you're kind of stuck to those other band members for the rest of your life because people, they don't like replacement musicians. They want to see that original lineup, man, especially in those nostalgia tours. You know? Absolutely, dude. That's the whole thing. Unless a you're guy stuck has with died. Them. <laughs> yeah, you're stuck with them. Good, bad, or indifferent. Because sometimes you don't realize, you know, when you're kids, you start and you, you, you happen. Then all of a sudden, again, that money, power, ego thing. Uh, comes into play and this guy what the hell happened to you man you know what what happened we were buddies yeah well fuck you i do this now you you, you change you grow up some for the better yeah. but uh, unfortunately some for the worse yeah. um and and your personalities start clashing and you, you 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 want to achieve different things or you you meet some chick and she comes in and uh, she's in every recording session and she's You're sitting. Going, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm going with that. And it just destroys the magic of totally. something. Yeah. Um, and it's it's happened. Uh, you know, the, the, the most famous, of course, is Yoko Ono. Well, Pussy um, breaks up bands, dude. It hands down. It does. It always oh, it does, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it does. A hundred percent. It's it's the reason uh, Joe Perry left Aerosmith all those years ago. Yeah, it, it's too bad. Um, it really is. I mean, and, and especially if you when you look back at that era, I mean, dude, there was so many people fucking other people, like whether they were connected with somebody else or not. When a band came in town, I mean, there was some lead singers and guitar players who were getting their dick sucked. You know? Yeah, yeah, all the time. You know, and you can't be solid with someone like that because as soon as you, <laughs> you as soon as you turn your head, is where'd you go? Uh, I, I don't know. I just met Brad Michaels. That's all. What were you yeah. doing? Just, oh we're just my talking. God, yeah. Where who? Jerry Cantrell. Oh. Oh, yeah spike from the <laughs> london choir but i mean it goes on and but that's that yeah that's what happens um 
Yeah. So, anyways, uh, yeah, I'm I'm going to see this this Motley Crew. Did you go and see it? Has it been up there? Uh, no. Uh, it, it was just here last week, but uh, I have not seen it. I, I have no desire to really go and see Motley again or Def Leppard for that matter. Uh, Poison, I've seen as well. I've seen Joan. I've seen all of them, and I I don't really need to see them again. The last time I saw uh, Joan Jett, this is maybe 1982 or three. It was one of those police picnics down at yeah. the cne the grandstand uh, but it was the whole field and it was uh basically a new wave fest we had the police the english beat talking heads um flock of seagulls and oh, yeah. joan jet joan jet somewhere put in there and i what i remember i remember it pretty pretty good was joan jet coming up on stage and as soon as she hit the stage i have never seen more fruit and vegetables fly up onto a stage than that day pelted wow. she had that song i love rock and roll yeah but the prop the problem with this i i said it, it was a new wave day she was right. the farthest thing from new wave the police talking heads english beat flock of seagulls there was a couple other it could have been the kings right you know i'm switching to glide switching and all to glide, that that's stuff. right yeah. yeah all that sort of new wavy stuff and then you put joan jet up there and i do remember this right in the middle of a song she stops playing and a big burly you know security guy comes out there and he says the next person that throws anything up on this stage, it's canceled. Boom. He gets hit in the head with a rotten tomato and some eggs go hitting him. And he oh. runs. Through. Oh, it was amazing. It, <laughs> and she did go back out and finish the set, dude. Good for her. You she, see, that's that's why I respect Joan Jett. Because she's got the fucking nuts to do that, right? Yeah. But it was it was uh, a misplacement for a new yeah. wave day to put Joan Jett up there. And in yeah, retrospect, yeah. I've got a great story and I saw that. And, but that I think when they put the, Justin Timberlake at star stop. Oh I yeah. Mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stones, well, ACDC rush and Justin yeah. Timberlake. <laughs> yeah. I, I was at that too. And, and I, I thought that was, I mean, rush stole the show ACDC and the, and the stones, but it was uh, ACDC and rush were amazing, dude. Yeah. They were killed. They had the, the dryers on stage. Yeah. Doing their laundry. I mean, yeah, they're great, dude. <laughs> it was it was crazy. But yeah, Justin Timberlake. Uh, yeah, that was it. That, that was, a, was there someone else on that that bill too? The, the guests who it? played. The guests who were on there. Sash Jordan played. It was yeah, very, yeah. I remember there was yeah. it was an all day thing. It started at I think maybe five in the morning and went till like midnight. I was crazy. All right, don't forget to check out LoadedRadio.com for all your hard rock and metal news as well. The 24-hour radio station as well. You can listen to past podcasts as well. You can get a hold of us there, all that cool stuff. It's a click away on your mobile device, your computer, wherever you are, man. LoadedRadio.com. Also, download the Loaded Radio app for all the podcasts as well. The 24-hour radio station there too. And all your hard rock and metal news. Okay, sound good? All right, we're out of here on behalf of everybody at Loaded Radio and LoadedRadio.com and as well as Johnny Rude. This is Scott Penfold saying we'll talk to you again next week on an all new edition of the Loaded Radio Podcast. Loaded Radio.